Hello and welcome back. Today I'm out doing a bit of float ledgering. It's probably the first time you'll have seen me do any float ledgering on the channel. Um, it's a session where major the majority of the time I'm going to be trying to get underwater takes um, and the float going on the surface. But all in all it's just going to be a general session. Uh, it makes it about 10 times harder when you're trying to get underwater takes because 9 times out of 10 you just end up spooking the fish off. Constantly recasting, trying to get the bait position right, make sure the camera's set up right. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a tricky one, but we'll see what we can get, see if we can come out with something. Um, I'll show you my setup quickly and then I'll crack on. So, it's a wire trace. This is just a bog standard, this one's actually out of a packet. Uh, I don't normally do it, but I just want the rig to be generally how sort of the average angler might go about using the, the float ledger set up. So this is a tray straight out of the packet, which you don't normally do. Uh, then just above that, I've got a buffer bead, which is on the top swivel of the trays. And then I've got a two ounce lead. I don't really need much heavier than that for my river. If I was fishing a bit of a heavy water, then I might use a three ounce, but generally I'm chucking into slack water anyway, so it shouldn't really matter. Um, so yep, the the lead can slide up and down the line that's actually attached to a plastic ring which allows the braid to move through it really smoothly compared to just a standard swivel and then above that i've got my flow which is a crystal flow bog standard sort of thing you can get in any tackle shop and then above that i'm using a float stop now the float stop obviously can move up and down the line which means you can adjust the depth really easily and to, to get the depth what i'm doing is casting into the slack water if the float just comes straight up to the surface and flops onto the top and I, can't, I can see it's not even hit the, the bead, um, the float stop, then what I'll do is adjust accordingly, make it shallower and shallower until the float just sits nicely. I like it sort of part cocked to just laying flat um, so that as soon as the pike takes, the float lifts up in the air and then it goes under and there you go, fish on. Um, I don't like to tend, if it's on a river, I don't like to have it completely um, sort of set so there's just the top sticking out because obviously if you get a random current it's just going to pull it under the water and you're going to be thinking you've potentially got a fish flying off with a bait when it's uh, it's not really without further ado let's crack on get some fishing done see if we can put anything on the back
result of this lovely, really fat, healthy jack pike. Realistically, I should have used my longer forceps. I, I keep a shorter pair on me for quick on hookings, and I've got a longer one that's just in my bag, just in case there's any deep. And I've caught my thumb on the, the tooth of the pike. It's my own fault. Beautiful fish. We'll get him back, and um, I might be able to get another one before the end of the session. Once again, really good take, but yet again, I can see my bait moving under the water. I can see the white colour of my bait, which means it must be a jack pike. And I know that it hasn't got the bait yet, so that's why I'm not striking, don't worry. It's wrapping me up in the weed. I'm just going to have to go for a strike, I think. Let's go for it. Nope, lost the fish and it's got the bait. I don't think I've ever been so disappointed. Probably uh, my biggest fish of 2018. It wasn't huge, it was probably maybe like 12, 13 pound or something. But it would have been my biggest fish so far this year. And as I've just left it resting in the net, the hooks were positioned in square in the roof of the mouth, both of them inside the pike's mouth. Somehow, I heard a bit of fresh around the net, but I weren't too worried. So quickly set up the camera, and when I went to pick the net up, there was no fish in the net and the hooks were left in the net. So somehow, when it was fresh with its open mouth, I managed to throw the hooks and jump out of the net because the net wasn't completely submerged. It was actually raised up above the water level. Good, never mind. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I've enjoyed my session as stressful as it's been. Getting this underwater stuff can be, actually be really stressful, especially when the fish aren't playing. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.